Goodison Park under lights. It's easy to become blasé about our football experiences but this grand, old stadium, perhaps in its last few years as home to Everton, is one of the great venues of the English game. It's the place where Newcastle United won the FA Cup for the very first time and United away to Everton is such a traditional fixture of our national sport, it should have a preservation order put on it. Although Goodison has an obvious romance to it, it can be a terrible place to watch football. The specs from the upper Bullens where our fans are located is a great example of why they need to move away and give some decent sight lines to punters. The facilities are antiquated and worn but I take this place wharfs and all over some sanitized Telholic Bolton, Reading, Borough, Sunderland, Wigan et al. The game itself, well, to quote my Scouse cab driver after the game, it was a right load of Sam Allardyce shish asterisk hey. Remember, Everton won. He was right though. Everton won the game with the only shot, I can recall them having, even though there was a certain inevitability about it and I do think they're better than us at the moment. We did go into the game with a light-hearted hope we might have overtaken them in the place league placings and I think that tells you everything you need to know about the progress Rafa has made with a pool of players limited in experience and quality. I'll say this now, Benitez has overachieved with this team but it should not blind anyone to the clear need for a significant recruitment all over the park this coming summer. Slomani got his first start for us but it was largely forgettable as he was well managed by the Everton backline and we never got behind them to cause many problems. In fact it was a rarity to see either side committing players forward to any degree and that made for a bit of a dull affair. I checked the clock at 22 minutes imagining, we might have been getting nearer halftime. Time moves slowly in a football match involving Allardyce. I'm not picking on Slomani. He will need games and I've no doubt the lad has talent but against opposition such as this and with Rafa's tactics about not losing, he struggled. I didn't see much from Perez either and whilst Richie was his usual bundle of energy and commitment, he spent an inordinate amount of time, doubling up with his fullback to provide defensive cover. We improved when Gale came onto the park, though we were going for it in the last section of the game, chasing an equalizer. Defensively, we are a really strong unit. Lassels has received a lot of justified praise this season but I really like the look of his partner Florian Lejeune who is a model of commitment all night. I sometimes forget Florian is Spanish given how well he has taken to the English game and we do well to remember that he and our celebrated Capo are both starting their first full seasons as Premier League players. We did attack well on the break down the flanks with Yedlin offering an outlet but often the final ball was a Ryan to be fair Everton defended deep and in numbers. Shelby and Diame were largely working in midfield battles but we didn't make enough of the corners and dead balls that came our way unfortunately. When was the last time we scored direct from a free kick? By halftime you kind of knew that the first goal would win it and so it proved with Walcott lashing home a loose ball in the box 51st minute. Gale had a similar chance but didn't take it. We had a big shot for a penalty for a handball from Jagelka but I've not seen any replays of that so can't really complain. It's easy to blame Allardyce for a poor game and one which largely bored a very subdued Goodison Park and to be fair he should take the bad response to a game that cost a near 40,000 attendance a decent screw of money, not to mention those watching on TV. It's Everton's responsibility, as the home side to attack a team below them in the league and who are only in their first season back in the place. Or am I missing something? Listening to Evertonians bemoan Allardyce's presence in their dugout is a weird deja vu. Everything they say about him is absolutely spot on. He spins for himself to a supine football media. He will take credit for the victories but the defeats will be someone else's responsibility. Everton is one of the most historic football clubs in the country with a definite culture of how to play the game. Nil status and all of that if you will. Like ourselves and West Ham we have a football philosophy nurtured over many years. We might not always live up to it but it is a cultural thing, an aspiration and something which defines our clubs. Allardyce doesn't belong at clubs like ours. He might do at roundhead clubs like Bolton and Sunderland but not for those of us who remember what a good player looks like. Unsurprisingly, the away end was in fine gloating voice at the only two days old news that Sunderland had fought their way to League One on the back of almost £300 million squandered over the last 10 years by a succession of idiots. Muppet Magnet, dead right. Pickford in the Everton goal got it from start to finish. Most of it largely unrepeatable but given his his little outburst on the final whistle was pathetic. Though it did remind me of the time Sunderland were relegated to League One by Burden Albion. 
Great to see Mags making donations to the Everton Food Bank at the park and and great to have a bit of crack with the when skies are grey lads on the island going all old school shifting a rare printed fanzine. So, a decent unbeaten run which has defined the season for us is over. We have West Brom at SJP on Saturday and whilst that game should not be underestimated by anyone, it is a good opportunity for us to get some more points on the board and ensure we finish the season in the top half of the Premier League. Keep on, keeping on. Michael Martin, follow Michael on at michael 1892 https colon slash slash soundcloud.com slash weekly pod slash podcast dash defeat dash dash Everton related.